Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's video I'm going to show you multiple ways on how to check a three-phase inverter compressor. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. In today's video we're going to be going over inverter three-phase compressors and multiple ways on how to check them. This is a three-phase DC motor 310 volts and specifically this came out of an LG three-phase condensing unit. A three-phase compressor has three terminals. In fact every compressor has the same exact terminals. We have a common, we have a start, and we have a run terminal. The first test that we're going to be running is with a multimeter. I'm using the Fluke 902FC HVAC clamp meter and we're going to run two tests with this. The first one, we're going to check resistance. Here is a symbol for resistance and this is the symbol for continuity. My meter does both at the same exact time. So as you're checking the resistance, you will get an audible sound, which is your continuity reading. We're going to go ahead and set the meter to that function. For a three phase motor, whether it's DC or AC, is actually going to be the same thing. So we're going to check between any two terminals and we're supposed to get the same exact reading. So we can check between these two and then these two and then these two. The way we check to see if the compressor is good is that between any two terminals you're going to have the exact same ohm reading or close to it. Just to keep in mind that this compressor has been deemed faulty and we're going to see why in the end of the video. We might even see it during the process. So let's check between any two terminals. Between the first two was common and run. We got 0.3. Then we're going to check between common and start. 0.3. Then we're going to check between run and start. Point two. Point three. So according to this test with resistance, we actually check out that this compressor is good. That was checking with resistance. As you guys heard, we had an audible sound that is checking continuity. So my meter is doing two things at once. On your meter, this might be a separate function. One other thing that you want is that you're supposed to have continuity aka you're supposed to have an audible sound between any two terminals. Good. 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 Now it checks out for the continuity test across the three terminals. Next we can check for any grounds. So we're going to check between any terminal and either the casing of the motor or a pipe connected to the motor. Make sure if you have like a coating here with the paint that you might want to strip that away when you're running this test and the next one that we're going to run. Or also you can go to a pipe and make sure that you have a nice clean pipe so you might want to sand that down as well. We're going to be doing the continuity test here and in this case you are not going to want continuity. No continuity means the compressor is good. If you have continuity the compressor is bad. So from one terminal to the casing, right, casing, nothing, that's good, or to the pipe, nothing. Next terminal to the pipe, nothing, or the casing, nothing, that's good. Next terminal to the pipe or to the casing, nothing. This turns out that this compressor is good. I typically like to use continuity for that as it is just simple. You put it, you hear a sound. To, to ground, then it's bad. No sound, it's good. But if you're also checking the resistance to ground, you want to make sure you're not getting any reading. As you can see, we have OL. That's no reading. If you had a reading, that would be bad. So OL, which is no reading, or in other words, no continuity, that's good. If you had a reading or you had continuity, 
it would be bad. For the next test, we're going to be doing an insulation resistance test. I'm using the Klein Tools ET600. Specifically, the Klein Tools ET600 is a megameter, and the test we're going to be doing is called the insulation resistance test, which is going to be similar to checking the compressor to ground. So between, we're going to put one lead on one terminal, and the other lead is going to be either on the casing of the motor or on a pipe connected to the motor. I see people doing it different ways, but it should give you pretty much the same reading. Just make sure that it is sanded down so you have good conductivity. For my megameter, I have two different leads connected for the purposes of this video. I typically use two alligator leads, but sometimes it's hard to grab it onto the compressor as we have that in this case. So I'm gonna be using my red lead, which is your standard lead at the compressor. And then this one is an alligator clip, which is gonna be steady. And I wanna have this to the casing of the motor. Once again, you're gonna want the casing of the motor sanded down or the pipe connected sanded down. So on one side, we're gonna have connected to the case of the motor. As we're running this test, please keep in mind that the black lead is grounded to the casing of the motor. We're going to be running a 500 volt test. Please understand what you're doing when performing these tests as we're going to be applying 500 volts to this compressor. So as one lead is grounded to the casing of the motor, I'm going to have the other lead on one terminal and I'm going to click test. Held it for a little while. We have 534 volts applied and we have over 4,000 mega ohms. This checks out. Now we're going to go to the next terminal and run the test again. And we surpassed 4,000 mega ohms. Next, we're gonna to go to the next terminal and apply the test again. And we are reading above 4,000 mega ohms. If you are unsure, you can run this test once again and connect the ground lead instead of the casing of the motor to the copper pipe that is sanded down and you have a good connection with. The rule of thumb and idea here is that when doing this test, Anything from 100 and below mega ohms, this compressor is bad and needs to be replaced. If it is between 30 and 100, it's in a very cautious state and of course needs to be replaced. But below 30 mega ohms, at that point you're already grounded out and when the compressor tries to start, your system is going to be blowing the breaker. In a system that carries these kind of compressors, there are so many sensors that is going to shut you down well before your breaker pops for safety, which is good. So for DC compressors, 100 and below is bad. Anything from 100 and above is good. But really, you want to be well above 100 mega ohms because if it is close, then you are on your way out. We just learned a few ways on how to check a compressor electrically. What were we actually testing? Well, we were checking the windings inside of the compressor and the insulation around the windings. So many of you are probably wondering, why was this compressor deemed bad? Well, we only checked out the compressor electrically, but unfortunately this compressor mechanically failed. How do we check that? Well, we're gonna go back to our multimeter and we're gonna set the meter to amps. We're gonna be checking amperage AC. So what we would do is wrap around our amp meter across any wire coming out of the compressor. We have three wires, either the common, start, or run. So we're gonna wrap the amp probe, which is this right here. We're gonna pretend this is the wire, we're gonna just clip it around there, set our meter to amps, and we're gonna be read amperage. The way I knew this compressor was bad is that when this compressor started, we had a very high amperage just in one shot. As soon as we started it, 
we had almost 30 amps AC. And the way that this kind of compressor, an inverter compressor is supposed to start, is that it starts low. So you have like a low amperage, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven amps. And it's gonna gradually increase. And as the compressor's load changes, we're gonna be using more or less of the compressor. So you can see those numbers fluctuating, but it's gonna be at like a steady pace. The reason this was bad, like I said, as soon as it started, you just had a very high amperage. And what that's telling us is that we have something called locked rotor. And in that case, the compressor was bad. This was shutting down on a specific error code where the error code stated we had a overcurrent and the system sensed it. So even though we checked out electrically, it is extremely important to check amps to make sure that we don't have something called locked rotor. And there you go. So even though it checks out electrically, it can still be bad. These are very, very sensitive systems. These inverter systems and inverter compressors are no joke. So remember to always do multiple tests because they all tell a story. We're going to end this video here, but in this video, we learned multiple ways on how to check a three phase inverter compressor. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.